Whoa, yep, we've certainly got some heat there. Yeah, good day. Mark here, and welcome back to my channel. Now, this board behind me has got a lot of half-finished projects on it. And so I decided to take a break from working on my little antique motorcycle engine project and actually try and knock off a lot of the projects off that list. A lot of them are tools that would really help me to be able to make parts for the Red Drop Radial. Just a quick follow-up on my oven build here. There were a couple of items which I had to address. So let's just get into it. Now a while ago I made this process oven and I'm pretty happy with it. But there are a few bits and pieces I need to sort out. First up, if you look back in here, you can see that the thermocouple I installed doesn't actually stick out past the brickwork probably at least a centimeter recessed below the surface and that means it's probably not measuring the temperature very accurately. The oven's probably hotter than it's indicating. To more accurately measure the temperature I need to install a longer thermocouple that'll actually stick out into the oven. Now unfortunately when I did the coil calculations I think I made some error and it's a little bit conservative, like it's not putting in as much energy as I would have hoped. Over here in Europe, our standard single phase domestic power supply is 230 volts. You should theoretically be able to pull about three and a half kilowatts. Obviously you don't want to run it right to the edge, but you can see I'm pulling only 2.3 kilowatts, even with the coil pretty cold. As the temperature rises, the resistance should increase and that power will actually drop. I obviously designed it with the coil too long and I need to make up a new shorter coil because I want it to be somewhere between maybe 3200, 3300 watts. At only 2.4 kilowatts it's taking excessively long to heat up to 900 degrees for heat treatment, like three and a half hours. So to increase the power, I need a shorter coil to increase my heating rate. Now because it's a single phase oven, I've just put it on a normal single phase power socket. But the issue with this is you've got a phase and a neutral, and I've only got a single solid state relay which disrupts the load. But because this is symmetrical, you may be plugging it in and disconnecting neutral rather than disconnecting phase, which could be a danger. The second issue is that the household wiring to the wall socket is only one and a half millimeter wiring and constantly drawing in close to 16 amps for long periods of time could also lead to overheating if there's some issue with one of the connectors or one of the wires insulation. So it's been recommended that I replace this socket. Since I've got three phase here anyway, if I put a three phase socket onto this power cord, I get the advantage of an asymmetric plug that can only go in one way, where the neutral and the line are always on the same pins. And also the household wiring behind that is all two and a half millimeters and should be more robust and take the constant high current loads without any issue. Now I won't switch that over just yet because I do want to measure the current on the new coil before I change it over. Fourth issue I had was when I made the original oven, it was pointed out that the, the solid state relays I used are sometimes supplied with underdimensioned transistors in them that do not have the current carrying capacity. I was directed to a website of how to check that. This solid state relay, although it's theoretically good for switching 40 amps, is a cheap knockoff of a real one. And when people have actually opened these up, they've found that the triac inside is often only capable of switching 12 amps or maybe 16 amps. From my own oven, I had two of them because it was a two phase oven. Oven. So one of them's installed already, but this is the spare. So let's open this one up. They were both bought at the same time, so I would kind of assume that they have the same triac inside, but let's take a look. There's obviously a screw into the heat sink here, thinking that this sticker needs to get peeled off. There's some online websites which show that if you don't have a a limit written here, or if these white lines are thicker, like on this one, this is probably just a rip-off copy and not, not an original. I guess this is not even branded with the original brand, so it's definitely a copy. Now unfortunately, whoever built this thing decided to fill the head of that screw with 
epoxy potting compound. I'm going to have to somehow pick that out before I can unscrew it. Okay, I'm starting to see now that a Phillips or cross point head. Wasn't really expecting that to work. At least not that easily. Actually, maybe I can just bend it up. And of course, it's also got black potting compound there, so just try and carefully scrape that off. So what does this actually say? BTA24. Okay, so I just looked that up, and sure enough, that is a 25 amp. So that's very good news. The fact that it's supposed to be a 40 amp triac, well, we'll ignore that for now, because I'm only switching about 10 to 12 amps anyway. So a big thank you to Hans-Erik Langer for pointing out that that could be a problem. But in this case, I think it should be fine. Right, well, I've set the oven to heat up to 1000 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's been going for a couple of hours and it seems to have topped out at about 780 degrees indicated. Now remember that the thermocouple is sitting about a centimeter below the surface. So it may well be hotter in the oven than it's indicating. I just haven't got around to switching this out yet. But anyway, let's take a look inside. Whoa, yep, we've certainly got some heat there. But anyway, for now I'm going to turn it off. And let it cool down so that I can switch out the thermocouple. But while searching for something else, I've just realized that I already own a longer K-type thermocouple. So I think the one I'm using now is 50 millimeters and this is 100. So that would at least stick out into the oven. So I think I'll install that first and just see if that helps with the tuning of the oven. Oop, that's not good. Look at the heat damage to the housing of the controller. I'd better put some insulation over that when it goes back together. Next up, I've got to get the old coils out of here. It was pointed out to me when I originally assembled this that industry doesn't make the coil slots as tight as I did. They normally leave the top side of the slot open so you can just drop your coils into them rather than having to feed them all the way through. So to make it easier, I'll do that. Just open up the slots on the upper and front side and then I can pull the, the old coils out and put the new ones straight in. When I made up the original oven, I had some extra wire so i made up a spare coil this one's also 19 ohms i think this is still pretty nice and flexible so i think what i'll first try and do is shorten this down to 14 ohms put it back in and see if i can still use it so where is 14 ohms it's an oxide layer on it so i'll just give it a bit of a scratch to make sure i've got conductivity Let's try about here. If I jump in here, I've got 17. OK, 
Okay, that's then 16 ohms. I calculated I need 14, but I seem to be removing a lot here. I'll terminate this a bit and try it out. It broke when I started bending it, so I guess I will use the new one. Cantle wire gets very brittle once it's been heat cycled. So this is my new coil. I'm aiming for just about 14 ohms. Ah, oh, that looks great. Right, let's get this installed. Since I have this leftover mat, I might as well just stuff it all in here where it can protect the electronics a bit, because what else am I going to do with it? Heavy beast now. Before I switch that plug over, let's see what current it now draws. Okay, I've now upped the power from 2.3 to about 3 kilowatts. It's still a little less than I would have hoped for. Hmm. I guess I'll use it for a bit at 3 kilowatts, and if I still find it's not powerful enough. There's nothing to stop me from making up one more coil and reducing its length even further. Right, with that tested, I've put the new plug on it. So now we'll just crank it up and see how long it takes to get to 900 degrees. Okay, that signal B means that the feedback sensors either failed or become disconnected. Open circuit anyway. It's in this case the thermocouple here, so either it's died already or it came undone. Let's check it quickly. Okay, they appear to be still connected. Right, what's the resistance between the points on this? Well, that doesn't look good. Let me test another one. Right, here's a new one. In this case another new one, because so the other one was too. Right, well that looks better. 12 ohms, and the other one was an open circuit. Let's swap that in. Okay, that seems to have given us a stable temperature now. Right, well I'll let that run for a while and come back and see what sort of temperature I got out of it. Okay, that's reaching temperature much more rapidly than before. It's taken about an hour to get up to 900 degrees versus something like three hours before. Now that's not all necessarily increased heating rate. Don't forget it could also be that before with the thermocouple being too insulated that the oven was probably even going beyond that temperature and it took that long for the thermocouple to measure it. Not sure about that. All in all, I'm really happy with the four improvements I've done to the oven. I think they should both increase safety 
and also increase usability. Right, well that's then all four of those jobs done, which is fantastic. If I still want to increase the energy, I could still make an even shorter coil, but for now, I think that process oven is a done deal. Well, there we have it. It wasn't the most exciting content this week, but I'm really happy to have got a whole bunch of line items off my to-do list, and I'll try and keep at that. Thanks for watching.